the matchup as the Bucks hit the court to take down the New Jersey Nets. The court heats up tonight at 8. The Milwaukee Bucks on MSC, your ultimate sports connection. Milwaukee Brewer Baseball on MSC is brought to you by Miller Genuine Draft. By Century Foods. By Coke. By Team Tires Plus. By Hoover. And by the Discover Card. County Stadium game two of our four game series featuring the New York Mets and your Milwaukee Brewers. And welcome back to County Stadium. A short turnaround after last night's winning affair for the Brewers. Matt Vaskersian and Bill Schroeder. Indeed, a win for the Brewers a night ago. Jeff Juden pitching well as a starter, timely hitting. Doug Jones gets the save, and everything worked out according to plan yesterday. The Brewers looking to do it again here this afternoon. Well, the one thing that the Brewers have some concern about is the bullpen, particularly long relief. Al Reyes really was not able to do the job. Brewers come up with a 5 to nothing lead, and right now, if you were talking about any hole that the Brewers have right now, it might be in that long relief, but things worked out very well. You got some clutch hitting, and two guys that really haven't produced quite as much in the early part of the season. Mark Newfield and Mark Loretta able to do the job. Really, when you talk about the pitching staff, it's been one of the strengths, in particular the starters. And today, it'll be the staff ace back to the number one spot in the rotation for Cal Eldred. He is opposed by another unknown commodity, certainly uh, as far as his big league experience is concerned here in the States. He is right-hander Masato Yoshi. And he is a rookie, 10 years in the Japanese league. We don't know a whole lot about him other than he's got some pretty good pitches, a good splitter. Seven strong innings against the Pirates. He picked up the win. Cal Eldred making his third start. You can see his numbers. A good ERA, 2.13. Cal's got his good velocity again this year. Once again, the starting pitching has just been outstanding for the Brewers. Last night, the nukester, big six foot eight, Jeff Juden, striking out Bernard Gilkey. He had the slider go and the big curveball, and of course, that dominating fastball. Juden was on his game with eight strikeouts a night ago. Jeremy Burnett stays red hot, home run number six. A frozen rope job over Rich Becker into the center field seats. Burnitz leads the big leagues with six bombs. Mark Newfield cashed in yesterday as well. Times out a Dave Malicki breaking pitch here. Drives in two with a double into the left field corner. Good to see Newfield swing in the bat. Well, at that point, it was all Doug Jones. A swing and a miss by Rich Becker. Jonesy with save number four. And the Brewers would roll to a 5-3 to three victory a night ago. So after that road bump, that loss to the Montreal Expos in the late innings a couple of nights ago, the Brewers pick it up with a win yesterday, and we'll look for back-to-back -back wins over the New York Mets here this afternoon. We're glad to have you with us on MSC this afternoon. Do stay with us. The starting lineups and the opening pitch coming up right after this. Menards is your project headquarters. Build a new deck with premium brown treated decking from Olympic. It's pre-stained, pre-sealed, and extra thick. It's all on sale and don't pay till next year. Protect your home with Diacero chain link fencing. It's easy to install and has a superior galvanized coating. 1989, a 50 foot roll. Buy now and don't pay till next year now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. m and Bank, kids and senior days return to the Brewers. Kids 14 and under, along with seniors 60 and over, can receive half-off reserve seats on 16 different dates. All brought to you by M&I Bank, where you can launch a personal website today. For more information, go to www.miweb.com. And to save on kids and seniors tickets, call the Brewers at 414-933-9000. John Lithgow performs the Discover Card Dialogue song. An extemporaneous piece. Provided for your dialing pleasure, call you call 1 800 It Pays To and apply for your Discover Card, the card with the cashback bonus award that always <laughs> pays you back. That was a nice surprise. 
And that's music to everyone's ears. It pays to discover. To apply, call 1-800-IT-PAYS-2. Accepted where you see the nervous sign. And welcome back to County Stadium. Matt Vaskersian, Bill Schroeder, producer, director Gary Kirby with you on a pleasant Saturday for baseball. The Brewers and Mets set to play Chapter 2 in this four-game book at County Stadium over the extended weekend, a series that will conclude with a game on Monday night before the Brewers hit the road for three at Montreal. Let's check the starting lineup for the New York Mets this afternoon per their manager, Bobby Valentine. It'll be Brian McRae after a day off in center field to lead things off back out there this afternoon. Edgardo Alfonso, their outstanding third baseman, bats number two. In left, the red-hot Bernard Gilkey hits third. First baseman John Olrud bats number four. In the five spot, right fielder Butch Husky. Second baseman Carlos Baerga hits number six. Catcher Alberto Castillo bats number seven. He's one of a couple of guys biding time until Todd Hundley can return to the Mets lineup. At shortstop, the outstanding glove man Ray Ordonez bats number eight. And the pitcher Masato Yoshi rounds out the lineup for Bobby Valentine's Mets. And one change defensively for Milwaukee this afternoon. Day game after a night game. Mike Matheny will catch. Jesse Levis got the nod last night. Bob Hamlin, another start at first base. Jaha still out with that sore trapezius muscle by his neck. Everything else pretty much the same. And on the mound tonight, right-hander Cal Eldred. You're familiar with Cal, certainly. 6'4", 237. The 29-year-old right-hander still looking for his first decision of 1998. In his first two starts, he has pitched very, very well, most recently at Florida back on the 5th of April. He went into the seventh inning, allowed just two earned runs on eight hits, Struck out four, walked three. Again, Cal did not get the decision that day, but the Brewers would roll to a 5-2 to two win and route to a series sweep over Florida. The officials for this afternoon's contest, Jerry Lane back of home plate. Crew Chief Harry Wendelstead moves to third. Sam Holbrook and Jerry Reeker make out the rest of the officials. We had a little sunshine at the ballpark earlier this afternoon. It has turned into a pleasant day for baseball, certainly. Expecting a crowd of over 20, between 20 and 25,000 anticipated here tonight, or this afternoon, rather, for this second in the series between the Mets and the Brewers. Well, yesterday, one of the stories, Bill, was certainly a Met that had gotten away in Jeremy Burnitz, and the New York papers this morning were filled with stories as to how the Mets could ever let such a talented power hitter get away. Imagine that, huh? Yeah. Boy, somebody is with one ball club, they let him go give up on him, and all of a sudden he turns up, gets an opportunity to play, and Burnitz, for the second straight season, has made a big impact for Milwaukee. We're glad to have him in with the Brewers. Well, certainly, hindsight's 20-20, isn't it? No doubt. And here this afternoon in the second game of the series with Cal Eldred on the mound, it could turn into the same story. Cal was originally drafted by the Mets in the 26th round of 1986 out of Urbana Community High School in Iowa. He did not turn professional until three years later when the Brewers took him in round one in 89. And his first pitch of the afternoon to Brian McRae is yanked foul. Now you mentioned it, Cal has had two no decisions in a row. He was joking around about that before the ball game. You remember last year, 34 starts, 28 decisions. So the no decision really isn't part of Eldred's history. Usually gets a decision one way or another when he goes out there. Certainly that history subject to change this year in the Brewers' inaugural season in the National League. And that certainly is a big part of it. The games that he has come out of, predominantly because of a pinch hitter. American League, he might have gotten decisions. Cal's got the fastball back. That's the key. We keep talking about it, but that's pretty much the only difference. That along with very good control on the corners with that pitch. Two balls and two strikes on Brian McRae leading off the top of the first this afternoon. Brewers starting play at 7-2 and two in second place in the National League Central. The game behind the Cubs at the start of play this afternoon. The Mets in the East at 5-4 and four in a two-way tie for second place with Atlanta. The surprising Phillies off to a good start this year at 5-3 and three atop the Eastern Division early. The Colorado 
Colorado Rockies out in the West have lost six straight. They started out undefeated. Were they four and zero? Lost six in a row. That's going to be a pretty good division. That NL West. Now most of the preseason publications called the National League West the best in baseball, with four teams capable of winning it all. And really the fifth being the Diamondbacks. It's really a wild card. You don't know how good they're going to be. Bobby Valentine entering his third season as skipper of the Mets. He took over late in 96. A good year last year with the Mets. Looking to build on that success in 98. Two balls and two strikes on McCray. Check this swing, rung him up. Well, that's a good location that we have been talking about in the first couple of starts for Cal. Right on the outside corner. Look at Matheny. He doesn't even have to move the glove, and he gets rung up. Good pitch by Cal. Right on the knees, right on the outside corner. Well, if you remember last year, Cal had a lot of trouble in the first inning in particular. That hasn't been the case this year. Edgardo Alfonso now starts in with a breaking pitch in for a strike. Alfonso was one for three with a couple of walks and a stolen base last night. One one is fouled away. And the big problem for the Mets. They certainly would like to have their power hitting catcher Todd Hundley in the middle of that lineup. 40 home runs a couple of years in a row, but power's been a problem. Only five home runs for the Mets. Only Montreal has hit fewer. They've hit four. They're having trouble scoring runs. Two and two. Some of their big boppers really haven't got on track. It's Bernard Gilkey. Got the high average, but has yet to hit a home run. Well, only Rich Becker, who is idle this afternoon, has more than one home run for the Mets at the start of play. Full count now on Alfonso. Three balls, two strikes. Now, the way this club is going to win, and it's the way Bobby Valentine prefers to win ball games, is with pitching and defense. But that's not to say that you can't have guys hitting it out of the yard. There's ball four to Alfonso. A lot of bases on balls last night. Of course, many of those doled out by the Mets were of the intentional variety. In fact, three intentional walks in one inning that tied a major league record. But Jeff Juden, Al Reyes, little wildness out of the Brewer bullpen. Brewers were guilty of nine walks last night. I'm reading. Bill Garner's comments in the paper this morning regarding Juden's outing. He said he was effectively wild. What got him in trouble is exactly what got him out of trouble. First strike one to Bernard Gilkey. When you go up there against Jeff Juden. You really, as a hitter, you can't dig in a whole lot. Throw two balls right on the black on the outside corner and then throw one up and in, keep you loose. Effectively wild. What they call it. Certainly worked for Juden last night. Off the fist, sprayed into right. Alfonso will take the turn and head for third base as Burnitz gets it back in quickly. They hold Gilkey to a single, but the Mets have put runners at the corners with one away in the first. Well, he didn't hit it very hard, but he placed it very well. Eldred able to get in on the hands of Gilkey, and he just fights it off. Right off the trademark, inside out, and just dumps it into right field. Burnitz does a good job keeping Gilkey at first base. It's over there in a hurry, gets rid of the baseball, and the double play is in order. So runners at the corners right out of the chute for the Mets with one gone to start the ball game, and John Olrude, the batter. Knocked in 102 runs for the 97 Mets in an RBI position here. See the five RBI for John Olderud. And those five RBI have come over the last eight games. Well, one of the guys that Valentine doesn't have to worry about is John Olderud. You know what you're going to get from him. 300 or around. 
Going to get on base. Good solid defense. Coach Husky waiting his turn. Well, we hit into a couple of double plays already this year. Two balls, no strikes on John Olerud. That sprayed into the corner and left. It could be trouble. Foul. And not by much. Well, that's a pitch a couple of years ago that Olerud would have had trouble getting a hold of. He's moved up on the plate since he has moved over to the Mets. A little bit closer to the plate. You can handle a pitch that's right off the outside corner. Almost slices it on, hits the chalk. Didn't miss by much. So two balls and a strike on John Olerud. Afternoon start tomorrow. And we're on the air with you on Midwest Sports Channel tomorrow afternoon as well. 105 first pitch. We hit the air at 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Then back to a 6 o'clock start on Monday. Those of you out of the Milwaukee area can catch us on MSC. Those of you here in Milwaukee will be on WCGV Channel 24. There's a fly ball into left center. Grissom there, deep enough to score a run from third, however, as Alfonso comes home. The first run belongs to the Mets, 1-0 New York. Oh, but when there is, is blowing out to left field. That right gave that ball a nice little push out in the left center. Kept pushing further and further over to left, and Grissom kept going after it. High fastball gets under it, but it's, hits it far enough to be able to score the Mets' first run today. See Grissom keep drifting and drifting further over into left field. Gives Olerud six RBI on the season. Gives him a share of the club lead. He and Rich Becker each with six. And now it's Butch Husky. Runner at first base with a run in and two away. Boy, Husky really had a rough night yesterday against Juden and company. Stranded six base runners last night. We caught a couple of shots of him on the bench, too. He wasn't happy with his performance a night ago. Well, a couple of very nice breaking balls from Jeff Juden. Struck out once on a good breaking ball with a couple of men in scoring position. Bases were loaded, as a matter of fact. How about the number seven and eight holes in the Mets lineup yesterday? Actually, six and seven. Eight strikeouts between them. Rough spot in the order, huh? Yeah, that's uh, that's been a problem, and, and it's not anything that's really snuck up on the Mets this year. When it was learned that Hundley was gone for the season, they had to bump everybody up in the lineup a little bit, and it left some holes at the bottom. There goes Gilkey, and that one's fouled away. Eight strikeouts, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that kind of stands out at you, doesn't it? Becker struck out four times, and in between each two, he hit a double. So ball and two strikes on Husky. Another big leadoff first for Bernard Gilkey. Two and two. A nice atmosphere in the ballpark this afternoon. This has kind of a big game feel to it with a lot of Japanese media covering the start. Brewers opposed by Masato Yoshi for the Mets today. Understand that they're televising this game back to Japan this afternoon. There's a base hit to the opposite field, a pitch up in the zone, and Husky tomahawks it to right. Throw gets away from Cirillo, but Eldred very heads up. He's right there behind his third baseman to cut it off and prevent anybody from advancing. Well, and you can hear the crowd giving him the applause, and you work on that in all of spring training, backing up bases, and very Second seldom does three, it make a difference. But Cal Ray, where he should be. That was a pitch out over the plate. Butch Husky can really cover the outside corner. Got to be very careful pitching to that young man. Got to pitch him inside. If you miss, he can jack it out of the ballpark, but he likes the ball away. So runners at first and second for the Mets, having already plated one here in the top of the first. Gilkey and Husky aboard, and Carlos Baerga the batter.
Vierga in from the left side for the second straight game. The switch hitter off to a slow start. Recall last April, April of 97. He hit a dollar and 88 cents through April, then hit 295 the rest of the way and salvaged a pretty good season. And it took him a long time to get over that trade from the Cleveland Indians. He was a big part of that Indians ball club at second base and really affected him mentally. Finally, last year, as you mentioned, after a slow start in April, put it all together. A much better hitter from the left side of the plate. Some of our friends from the Japanese media covering this performance today, and that is not a script from Godzilla v. Rodan Part 2. <laughs> those are baseball notes printed in Japanese. Yeah. How come we didn't get any of those? I think Greenberg put those together. <laughs> He's got enough trouble with his own language. Little flare out to Cirillo, who backpedals and makes a play. So only one in the Mets first. A run on a couple of hits for the Mets through a half inning of baseball. New York one Brewers coming to bat. Plus, like no other tire store. No, I don't need vinyl siding. This is an apartment. I can't get away from these salesmen. I'm Jim. Hi, Jim. This is for you. Hello. Make sure you deal with a pro. Like your GMC dealer. It's closer than you think. Here, let's take a look. Right now, get a GMC Sierra regular cab with low 1.9% APR GMAC financing and average finance savings of $25.61. See your southeastern Wisconsin GMC dealer today. Oh, no, no, don't get it. Now, the Mets plate one against Cal Eldred early in this one. Take their first lead of the series. 1-0 New York after a half inning of baseball. And it's time to take a look at right-hander Masato Yoshi. This is how Phil Garner aligns the Brewers this afternoon. Fernando Vina, 0 for 4, ending his eight-game hitting streak yesterday, leads things off at second base for the Brewers. Jeff Cirillo, who's got a four-game hitting streak under his belt at the start of play today at third base, bats second. Shortstop Jose Valentin hits number three in the cleanup spot. Your major league home run and RBI leader, right fielder Jeremy Burnitz. And center Marquise Grissom with a six-game hitting streak under his belt at the start of play, bats number five. Bob Hamlin at first hit six in the seven-hole. Left fielder Mark Newfield with a couple of RBI last night. That's your Mike Matheny bats eight, and the pitcher Cal Eldred hits number nine. Well, one change defensively behind Yoshi this afternoon. Brian McCray gets a start in center field. Rich Becker on the bench tonight. Pretty good group defensively in New York, in particular that left side of the infield. Masato Yoshi on the mound for Bobby Valentine's Mets this afternoon, making his second American Major League start. The Japanese import 13 and 6 last year. Of course, he did his work in the Pacific Rim, yeah. as he had done for 13 years before coming over to the States this season. And he starts Fernando Vina with a strike. Well, there you see the numbers on Yoshi. Check out the strikeouts 104 strikeouts, 174 innings. Not a bad earned run average, 13 and 6. As his team won the Japanese World Series last year the Japanese league champion Yakult Swallows he is 0 and 1 on Fernando Vina in stark contrast to Japanese imports Nomo and Durabu Masato Yoshi is the Japanese equivalent to Charlie Huff kind of a junk baller mm -hmm. good split fingered fastball 
Vina lines to left. Gilkey back on it, however, one away. Well, the scouting report that we got on Yoshi is not overpowering, as Matt just mentioned. He'll tail the fastball, has a slider that he likes to throw predominantly to right-handed hitters. He's got a curveball and a split-fingered pitch that he will use against lefties. Talking to some of the players around the batting cage today, they really don't know what to expect. They have no history with him or any pattern that he's established. Certainly, they've never seen him before. And Lamar Johnson knew all about him, though. I went right to Lamar, the batting coach, and gave him the scoop. One gone for Cirillo. No, well, prior to the game this afternoon, after BP, the Brewers were watching videotape of Yoshi's Major League debut. He was a winner back on the 5th of April against Pittsburgh and really dealt seven innings, three hits, no runs, struck out seven. Yeah. It's the first seven innings of a combined shutout. One and one. Look like the split fingered fastball that time. He's also got a change up that he will throw. Doesn't look like a rookie, does he? 13 years of salt in that right arm over there in the Pacific Rim. <laughs> Been around a little bit. Yeah. Spent his first 10 seasons with the Kinetsu Buffaloes before joining the Yukult Swallows in 95. Real big difference between Yoshi and Arabu and their stories on and off the field. Unlike Hideki Arabu, Yoshi has not been constantly promoted by his manager and his owner. Unlike Hideki Arabu, Yoshi signed for close to the major league minimum when he right. came over here right. and didn't have these ridiculous demands placed on his new team by his agent, a la Arabu. Base hit for Cirillo. That's a great at bat. Well, we saw him do that in yesterday's ball game. We're going to right field with two strikes. You're going to see Cirillo do that all season long. Same approach that he's taken to his at bats last year, the year before. Pitches away, go that way, and a lot of base hits to right field if you're a right handed hitter. So Cirillo aboard now for Jose Valentin. Jose was one for four last night. A couple of hits on the homestand for him. Brewers have a runner at first with one away, trying to get that early Met run back. Fastball in for a strike over the outside corner. Valentin has impressed into the number three slot with the absence of John Jaha, who is still listed as day to day. Talking to John Adam, the Brewers trainer, says he's probably not going to see Jaha in action until we go to Montreal. Much of a concern around that neck area and the shoulder. There's another guy that the Brewers have a bit of concern about, David Nilsson, recovering from arthroscopic knee surgery during spring training. So he's going to start jogging a little bit next week. Yeah. It's good to see the likes of David Nilsson and Jeff D'Amico, who's also on the shelf until around the All-Star break, around the ballpark doing their rehab work. A ball and two strikes on Valentin now. It's taken Valentin a little bit of time to adjust to the number three spot. It was really hot hitting down in the order. Has cooled off somewhat up in the three hole. Maybe it's a coincidence. Maybe not. Got him. Two away at the strikeout registered to Valentin. Oh, there's that good split fingered fastball that we've heard so much about. Goes directly down in the strike zone and that's a tough pitch to pick up. One of the toughest pitchers for hitters to identify out of the pitcher's hand. Looks like a fastball and just dives as it gets to home plate. Here's Burnitz now. Two gone, a runner aboard for Jeremy. And Yoshi starts him with a change of pace in for a strike. Doesn't mess around, does he? Tell you what, he has thrown first pitch strikes, and I think he's used a different pitch for each batter. Yeah, fastball, curveball. 
Bobby Valentine likes Yoshi a lot. He's been very protective of him, however. Grounded to second base, Bayerga spears it and throws out Burnitz. Despite the one-out single by Cirillo, it's a scoreless first turned in by Masato Yoshi. To the second one, nothing Mets. You're watching Brewers baseball on MSC. Warm, snuggly blankets. Rocking chairs and lullabies. Baby steps. Bubble baths. A thousand games of hide-and-seek. Curved balls and broken windows. First loves and broken hearts. Newborn baby. A lifetime awaits him in a little gray house on Chestnut Street. For a free guide to help you on the path to homeownership, call the Fannie Mae Foundation. We're showing America a new way home. If I ran the post office, there'd be a way to send paperwork and merchandise overseas. It gets attention. Something that says, open me. I'm important. But it's got to save money. Real money. And go to all my key markets. Plus, it would have value. It would be reliable. And fast. Global Priority Mail. It's happening at your U.S. Postal Service. We deliver. Bobby? What do you want? We've got to talk. These kids are mixed up with don't know right from wrong. They're my friends. The people who don't dial 1-800-COLLECT are nobody's friends. 1-800-COLLECT is 10 cents a minute every evening. Really? This isn't a game, kid. You could be saving your parents money. Bobby, with us or him? You made the right choice, son. 1-800-COLLECT, 10 cents a minute every evening. Spring Madness returns to County Stadium on April 17th, 18th, and 19th against the Giants, featuring $1 bleachers, $3 general admission tickets, and $1 Cokes and hot dogs. Call 933-9000 for more information. It's going to be a good weekend. Yeah. As this one is. Alberto Castillo leads off the second against Cal Eldred, quickly behind nothing in two. The 0-2 home from Cal misses wide. 1-0 Mets, an RBI sack fly off the bat of John Olerud in the top of the first. Your one-inning difference. One hop to Vina. Plays it well at the cutout and throws him out. First shot, number 10, Ray or Goodman. Ray Ordonia is a banner now. We talked a little bit about how the Brewers really had no idea what to expect out of Masato Yoshi this afternoon. Conversely, the Mets have looked at plenty of tape on Cal Eldred. And the one thing that they all agree with when you ask the Mets, so what do you think Eldred's going to have today against you, is that, well, we know he's a horse. Mm -hmm. Hard thrower, come right after you. No doubt about it. Conversely, as you mentioned, not a thing about Yoshi regarding anything that he's done. He's thrown one game in the big leagues. Of course, he had some spring training starts, but that could be deceiving. As Brewer fans know, where the starting pitching was, well, you could probably say it was pretty bad in sure. spring training, but once the bell rang and they flipped the switch on opening day, everything turned around. Ordonez with a shot into the corner and left. Newfield is there and he runs it down. Well, that ball was hit well. Good running catch by Newfield, two away. Well, Ordonez really tomahawked that high fastball. Newfield plays deep in left field. And it came into play that time. He doesn't have far to go. He got a good jump and made a true direct route to the baseball and made it look easy. Did that guy start hitting, playing good defense, huh? 
about the last thing you need for everything to come together. Man, it's scary to think what this team's going to be able to achieve when Newfield starts to hit, when Jaha gets back here. Yeah. Nilsson gets back, D'Amico. Yoshi taking a pretty good hack out there on 1 0 and fouls it away. Where's little shin guard on the front foot? Gives you an idea. He's been hitting in his day. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. The only rookie at age 32. With an asterisk. There's the shin guard. A couple of balls off the feet. That's what happens. You wear one of those. Blind Avenia who gobbles it up. A quick three up, three down second. Turned in by Cal Eldred. An inning and a half gone from County Stadium. Mets on top one zip. You're watching Brewers baseball on MSC. We all know how a dog reacts when he sees something he really likes. Unexpectedly, I've noticed the same behavior on this young man. Can you turn this into something good? Fans, the Amico Come On Back Club Card returns for another season of free Brewers tickets. Drive into your local participating Amico station to receive your Amico Come On Back Club Card. Then fill your car with eight or more gallons of gas five times to receive a free upper grandstand ticket good for one of five Brewers games. Stop into your local Amico station and pick up your Amico Come On Back Club Card today. Hey, this game plans a winner. It's a gritty and challenging task, but Team Tire Spots trains hard to bring you world-class service, keeping your car in condition for the daily hustle on the gridiron. Tires Plus knows brakes. Tires Plus knows shocks and struts. Tires Plus knows tires. They're the top people by the bottom of your car. When news breaks, we are there. When the big stars, we welcome Kareem Evander Holyfield with Roger Clemens. Tell their stories. But I'll never shut the critics up. If you ain't broke, go fix it. Fox Sports News Primetime is there. And now, I, I can really say uh, Charles is the best player in the country. On the field, in the clubhouse, or behind the scenes, our team's got you covered. Fox Sports News Primetime, we are there. Weeknights at 10. Don't miss all the NBA excitement coming up on MSC. Tune in as the Milwaukee Bucks hit the court to take on the New Jersey Nets. The court heats up tonight at 8 o'clock following the MSC Sports Connection. Join Jim Paskin and John McLaughlin right here on MSC, your ultimate sports connection. Masato Yoshi going to work here on Grissom, Hamlin, and Newfield in the Brewers' half of the second. 1-0 Mets early. Marquise has put together a six-game hitting streak after a one-for-four last night. Grounded back up the middle, make it a seven-game affair. Second hit against Yoshi for the Brewers this afternoon. Boy, Grissom waited back well on that off-speed pitch, and that's what you have to do. Right-handed hitters are going to have to think up the middle off of Yoshi this afternoon. You try and pull that ball. It's an easy ground ball out. Up the middle, it's a base hit. So Grissom aboard to lead off the bottom of the second. Two for four in the stolen base department so far this year. He was caught stealing last night. And now it's left-handed hitting Bob Hamlin. Grissom with a big lead off at first. Looks like he wanted to take off. Looks like Yoshi fairly slow to home play, a high leg kick. I know Bob Hamlin wants him to stay right there. A big hole between first and second. Holdwood holding him on. Not quite the big lead this time. Yoshi more aware of him. One of the things that slows down Yoshi on his way to home plate with his delivery is the almost Nomo-esque work from the, from the wind. Mm -hmm. From the stretch, of course, with the runner on, he's going to be a little quicker. But fans may have already picked up the similarity between he and Hideo Nomo, a former teammate of his, by the way. 
A little pause at the top of his delivery. Brings the glove over the head. Stops for a split second to collect himself. A little different with a runner on here. He's out of the stretch. The next offering to Hamlin is low. One thing he does not have that Nomo has is that the tornado-like wind where he shows you his numbers almost uh, Fernando Valenzuela look. Spins around. He stays pretty much square at you. Lamar Johnson getting a pretty good look at Yoshi this afternoon. There goes Marquise. A huge jump. Throw down by Castillo. Sails into center field. Marquise on his way to third. Throw from McCray. Not in time. Grissom to third. Speed kills, baby. Oh, that's a great job by Marquise Grissom realizing that that ball was going into center field. A tough thing to do. You have your head down all the way. The head first slide. You really don't know where the baseball is. He doesn't know where it is. He looks up. There it is in center. And he had to get up quick. Boy, Brian McCray right there made a good throw to third base. If Marquise had hesitated just for a second, he might have been out. I'll tell you, when I saw Marquise get up and make his way to third, you saw McCray get to the ball just as quickly. And it looked as though it was going to be a lot closer at third base. And there's ball four to the hammer. Runners at the corners. Nobody out to start the second against Yoshi. Here's Newfield now. Had that two-run bases loaded double last night against Dave Malicki. Boy, that disruptive speed element on base, something that was so sorely missing from the 97 Brewers. But Grissom has really cured those ills this year. Well, you got Beanie, you got Valentin, you got Grissom now. They can steal a base just about any time they want to. Burnitz, he stole 20 last year. Much better speed, as you mentioned, on this club than last year. Brewers already with three guys that have three stolen bases. Vina's got three. Brunitz with three. And now Grissom with three. There's Mike Matheny waiting on deck. Nobody out. Runners at the corners. A ball and a strike on Mark Newfield. Brewers down by a run early. A drive to left center. McCray back on it. Not deep enough to get out of here, but certainly deep enough to plate Grissom from third. Tagging it first is Hamlin. He reaches safely. Check him out. At 235 pounds, Bob Hamlin tagging up and advancing on the fly ball. Boy, a nice base running play by Bob Hamlin. Boy, you don't expect that. Boy, a good wood on the ball from Mark Newfield. He hit that ball a little bit more toward left field. It's probably going to be out of the ballpark. No problem for Grissom to score, but Bob Hamlin taking off right away from first base. And it was close. Boy, that's a big turn of events right there now you got another man in scoring position you can't turn the double play good base running that's three RBIs for Newfield in his last game plus and now it's Mike Matheny Mike had the day off last night homered against Montreal on Thursday his first of the year and the Brewers have tied it up one apiece a couple of sacrifice flies by each club early today. Well, the big difference in Mike Matheny so far this year, he's really thinking about driving the baseball until he has two strikes. Home run he hit against Vasquez in Montreal a couple of nights ago. Indicative of that, a high fastball really turned on it. To 3 and 0 oh now. Well, the Brewers, in just an inning and a third, have been able to do more against Masato Yoshi than the Pittsburgh Pirates were able to do in seven innings five days ago. And that is score against the right hander. He's already been in more trouble this afternoon than he was in in the entire game, his last start. 3 and 1 to Matheny.
there's ball four. Second walk of the inning by Yoshi. Well, Mathene is going to get a lot of opportunities to see pitches go by, particularly hitting out of the number eight slot. It's going to be important for him to continue to be patient. Only hit strikes. Here's Eldred now with runners aboard and one away. We'll see what Phil Garner has Cal doing. See the note there, his one hit on the season, a single against Greg Maddox on opening day in Atlanta. And Eldred's going to give himself up. Oh and one. Uh, although Cal has a base hit to his credit, Phil wants to see Vina go up there. With runners at second and third with two outs, likes his chances a lot better. Brewer pitching, I was talking to Sal Bando before the ball game. He's been very impressed with the pitcher's abilities to get bunts down. Very successful so far. Eldridge swinging away. One himself and then throws out Eldred to double off the Brewers. That one looked like it was getting up the middle. Ray Ordonez, the gold glover at short, robs Eldred and the Brewers. Milwaukee with one and the second to tie it. Many health related problems like glaucoma, cataracts, macular degeneration, and retinal deterioration can be detected during a vision examination. That's why an annual eye exam is so important. Be confident that your family's eyes are being cared for properly with an AccuVision 2020 eye exam at Stein Optical. Do it for yourself and your family today. Get daily wear contacts or disposable contacts for just $99 now only at Stein Optical. Stein Optical is making you look better for less. Meet the Brewers during Ohio Casualty Insurance Autograph Friday. Each week prior to Friday's game, six to ten players and coaches will be on hand for autographs. Plus, Ohio Casualty Group of Insurance Companies will provide a black and white player picture card during each autograph session. This is our thanks to you. Join the Brewers and Ohio Casualty Insurance, where extra effort is their policy, every Friday, all season long. Call 414-933-9000. Nobody does it like you, the way that you do. Nobody's got the power to please me. The Hoover Steam Vac Ultra has five rotating brushes. Plus, it has a powered hand tool with two more brushes. It cleans like a whole crew of professionals. So, you know, there's really no comparison. Hoover, nobody. Steam Vac Ultra. Does it like you? Team Tires Plus trivia question for this afternoon. What current Met is the only player in Major League history to hit switch hit home runs in one inning? Hmm. Switch hit home runs in one inning. Hmm. That means he hit one from each side of the plate. Is Tommy Agee a switch hitter? He was a right hander. Okay. Current Met. Oh, it's a current Met. Yeah. All right. We'll see. There we go. Top of the third. Brewers have tied it at one apiece. Cal Eldred squares off and gets the top of the order for the Mets, McCray, Alfonso, and Gilkey. First ever series between the Brewers and the Mets. First installment went the way of the home team yesterday. The Brewers winning at 5-3. to three. Looking for a win today. Would mean wins in eight out of their last nine ball games. 0-2 on McCray. It's about a 58-foot breaking pitch. Count now to one and two. And a good pitch on 0 and 2. You're going to throw a curveball on 0 and 2. It's a good spot for you. You don't want to hang it. Two and two. Brian McCray 
one of those big leaguers that enjoys the entire experience. Likes to interact with fans. Very accommodating with autograph requests, etc. Three balls and two strikes. In fact, he's one of the guys that uh, checks his mail via the internet rather regularly. Hmm. Major League Baseball has a website you can contact your favorite players on. There's ball four. Boy, Eldred was in front of him 0-2, but loses him. Well, I tried to get him with a curveball and three straight high fastballs. Well, Brian McCray not afraid to steal a base. He's got very good speed at first. So McCray aboard for Alfonso now. www.bigleaguers.com. No space between big and leaguers. So kids, if you've got access to the uh, the internet. If you're in the world of cyberspace, you can uh, leave a message for the likes of Brian McRae or whomever else you wish. McRae is one of those that checks his email regularly. That's great. Yeah, it's neat. Yep. I need to hear more stories like that about the big leaguers. I think so, too. Yep. One out to Alfonso, in for a strike. Could you imagine as a kid, say, uh, you know, 12, 13-year-old kid, and you're checking your email, and instead of getting things trying to sell you long distance service and the, that spam stuff that gets out there all the time, that garbage <laughs> email, you've got a message from Brian McRae? Yeah. I think that'd be great. That would be great. Alfonso looking to bunt, pops it up. Eldred makes a play, and Alfonso can't get the sacrifice down. Well, with the team struggling to score runs, and Bobby Valentine figures he wants to get McCray to second base and let the middle of that order go after it. you got to be able to get the bunt down, particularly if you're struggling with the bat. So one away. McCray has to hold it first now for Bernard Gilkey. Gilkey had a good night last night. He's nine for his last 18. You get a lot of that uh, spam, don't you, that junk mail? Yeah. Get a lot of that and jokes. People forwarding me jokes all the time. Why is that? Do you get? I don't get a lot of that junk mail stuff. I wonder why that is. <laughs> I don't know. Just lucky. <laughs> <laughs> you get the junk mail on the computer and in the mailbox. I get plenty of the stuff in the mailbox. I got more pizza coupons. I could line three walls in my house with pizza coupons. <laughs> Throw to first is close, close enough to get him. Well, you knew Brian McRae was going to try and steal second, particularly after the bunt didn't work. Eldred caught him leaning in a very good throw in Hamlin. They had him dead. Well, not as dead as I thought they did. A little bit of a high tag by Bob Hamlin. He might have been in there. Close enough, though, Brian. Got him. Yep. Well, that's good work. That's good camera right there. Yeah. So 2-0 and with nobody on and two away. This is the kind of half inning that drives a manager crazy. You get the leadoff hitter aboard. Then your number two hitter can't put the sacrifice down. Then the guy gets picked off at first. Well, it all comes down to the bad bunt. Brian McRae trying to get a big lead and steal the bag instead of being at second base already for Gilkey. Fundamentals. That's very important over here in the National League. Fans help the Brewers provide baseball gloves for their youth baseball programs. Bring gloves to Gate X Tuesday, April 21st, and receive a game ticket for just $1 for each glove redeemed. That's April 21st versus the Dodgers. Valentine in the hole, had him played well and gets him. Despite the leadoff walk, Eldred turns the Mets away in order in the third. Through two and a half, tied at one, you're watching Brewers baseball on MSC.
need vinyl siding. This is an apartment. I can't get away from these salesmen. I'm Jim. Hi, Jim. This is for you. Hello. And make sure you deal with a pro. Like your GMC dealer. It's closer than you think. Here, let's take a look. Right now, get a GMC Sierra regular cab with low 1.9% APR GMAC financing and average finance savings of $25.61. See your southeastern Wisconsin GMC dealer today. Oh, no, 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 get it. Save on a wide selection of Owens Corning fiberglass shingles at Menard. 25-year Supreme fiberglass shingles are on sale for $6.99 a bundle. Add style with multi-tone Supreme shadow shingles, just $9.98 a bundle. Or top off your home with the layered look of Oak Ridge 2 shingles, just $10.98 a bundle. All Owens Corning shingles are on sale now. Don't pay till next year during project days at Menard. Save big money at Menard. Tires Plus, like no other tire store. Hey fans, are you looking for more hockey action? Then tune into MSC for the IHL Game of the Week. Catch all the rivalry as the Grand Rapids Griffins take on the Quebec Raphaels. The puck drops at midnight tonight right here on MSC, your ultimate sports connection. Tided ones as we go to the bottom half of the third. Matt Vaskersian, Bill Schroeder, along with producer-director Gary Kirby. Nice afternoon for baseball here in Milwaukee. Vigna with the ball well hit to left center. Brian McRae back on it. At the track, he runs it down. Vigna's made good contact this afternoon against Yoshi. Yeah. There you see Brian McRae trying to explain to somebody, I was in there. No, you weren't. One gun now for Cirillo. A run on two hits for each club. The Mets guilty of an error. It was the throwing error by Alberto Castillo that led to the run in the second. Cirillo lines to third. Alfonso is here to make the play. Two quick outs in the third inning. Well, Cirillo hasn't had any trouble zeroing in on Yoshi's pitches. First he goes to right, then he. It's a bullet right to Alfonso at third base. Here's Valentin now. See, we told you it was a nice afternoon. 55 pleasant degrees. A chance of rain a little later on this afternoon should not affect the ball game. Tomorrow supposed to be even warmer. Yeah. Gentle breezes at nine miles an hour from the southwest. Listen to you, <laughs> meteorologist Bill Schroeder. Yeah. Painting such a serene picture. Owen oh, too quickly on Valentin. And a called strike three. Masato Yoshi mowing through the Brewers' top of the order in order in the third. To the bottom half, tied at one. the chance of a lifetime at Potawatomi's Showcase for High Stakes Bingo, located just minutes from downtown Milwaukee. You could be our next $2 million winner in our new Las Vegas-style slot area, now open 24 hours. For details on bingo times or special events, call us at 645-6888 or 1-800-PAYS-BIG. Potawatomi Bingo Casino, offering over $5 million in payouts daily. Terrence, he's gonna learn with the Funk Master Flex how to wear his starter hat. You ready? 
Early in the afternoon, yeah. out with mommy and you're chilling. Don't draw too much attention to himself. <laughs> now, 5 p.m., the hat is perfectly on the head. It's really good. 125th, baby. Oh, we're going to show my man transforming. It's 11 o'clock at night. Because you shouldn't be out at 11. Not in the a.m., but 11 p.m. You're doing real good. <laughs> Start us down. Give me back my ass. What would you think about $189 a month on a Toyota Tacoma 4x4? Just a $189 a month lease on the number one selling compact 4x4 pickup. Just $189 for Four Wheeler Magazine's Pickup Truck of the Year. For $189 a month, you'll think the Tacoma is one tough truck. Except on your checkbook. This is a TMCC lease available through your Toyota dealer. Each dealer negotiates his own terms. Get to your Toyota dealer now. Ship your package in two days with FedEx. And you run into seven different price zones. Ship your package in two days with UPS. And you run into seven different price zones. Ship your package in two to three days with priority mail. And there's just one price zone. So, what's your priority? Priority mail from the U.S. Postal Service.